You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 750 AM, 312-255-8408. Also get us on YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago, YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Father Greg Zakowitz, the rector of Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago, and co-host Mark Teresi, executive director. Good morning, Mark. How was your weekend? was g- good. Got to see our little granddaughters. They're going to go to the other side the family for Easter, so I got to bring Easter baskets. Our My wife had a shower, so I walked in, and the first question they asked, where's Grandma? For about the <laughs> next 10 minutes, where's, but why isn't Grandma here? When I thought, I'm chopped liver, and uh, Grandma so, didn't come. So happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's, where's Grandma? Was, and then the other thing, which I thought, I thought was fascinating and, gra- and grateful, we're grateful, we had dinner one night with friends. We've been friends for 54 years. Wow. And then the next night we had dinner with friends that we've been friends for 50 years. And I thought. What a blessing. We all look pretty good. Well, <laughs> except me. <laughs> I know, except me. In, in your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> the others may probably look terrific, but, but oh But well. a nice, w- nice, nice weekend. And nice. Also, it's hard to believe that we are now starting Holy Week. And to make this week holy. We had a great uh, fish fry on Friday evening, mm-hmm. cathedral, over 100 people, and wonderful crowds for Saturday and Sunday for um, adoration and the masses. You know, beautiful crowds and people coming and thousands of palms given away. So it was a good weekend. And I, I saw people this week make this week holy. Take mm-hmm. time to go to confession, reconciliation, a uh, beautiful sacrament to celebrate God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. And be part of Holy Thursday, Good Friday. And people say, well, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Make the time. It truly will make a difference. We have a great program lined up again, 312-255-8408. And traditionally, many Christian groups plan or stage a Way of the Cross event on Good Friday, connecting the sufferings of Christ during his passion with the suffering of our brothers and sisters at the hands of violence, greed, poverty, sickness, and war. Today on Catholic Chicago, we have a group that organizes a Way of the Cross event in downtown Chicago. Each year, they follow the passion of Christ in the heart of our city, where thousands of people carry their cross every day through choral music, gospel passages, reflections, and silent procession. We hope to enter more deeply in the events of Good Friday and their meaning for us today. They ask us to experience the exceptional presence of Christ among us as a real answer to the needs of our hearts. Our guest, Bishop Mark Bartosik, an outstanding bishop, Bishop of Vicaria between the Archdiocese of Chicago. We also have with us Claire Chiodini and David Bonicelli. So good morning to Bishop Bartosik, Claire, and David. Welcome to the program. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning Father Sackowitz. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Good to see all of you. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe. And, uh, and uh, now, Bishop Bartosik, I was just with you last week. We both have so many things going on. Where was it again? I'm trying to recall. <laughs> Jeez. Was it the right of elections? Uh, that Okay, that was a couple of weeks ago. That's the right of election. So the right of election yeah. ended. Uh, now, maybe just for a moment, the way of the cross, either Claire or David, I know that Ben organized the program for today. He, you know, he gives me a call, and I say, you have to get on the radio program. Uh, who can give us the history of this in, incredible event that's happening on Good Friday, either Claire or David or the bishop. Who wants or to I chime in? Maybe try to give like the the Chicago history. 
So the, the gesture itself started in Italy, I would say like 40 years ago with Father Giussani. Um, it, the, there would be a big gathering, especially of university students uh, in a shrine close to Milan, there's hundreds of people. And that, that tradition kind of carried over across the world where communion and liberation is present. So for Chicago, we started in 2004, was our first year of the, of the cross. It was a very small group. We didn't have permits. We just kind of like winged it, tried it. And, um, but from that moment on, we kind of like following um, the same model that Giussani had introduced again 40 years ago. We kind of, the moment grew. We wanted this to become for the Chicago church and for the city of Chicago. And so over the year, more people, more groups got invited, and the event has been growing since 2004. Beautiful. Claire, how are you involved? In, who's organizing this? <laughs> you? Um, I'm definitely not organizing <laughs> the way <of> the cross. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. Um, no, I, I'm involved as a member of community liberation. I've walked the way of the cross since I was a small child. I come from Boston and we have a way of the cross there. Um, so I've been doing it in Boston until I came here for law school and then I started walking it here and I'm also in the choir. So that gives me a, a participatory, um, element to my, my being at the way of the cross. So Claire, you've been part of it now for how many years? Well, I'm 26, so for about maybe 22 years wow. <laughs> in my life. From um, and in, in Chicago, this is my third year. Okay, third year in Chicago. And Bishop Mark Bartosik, uh, this will be how many years for you, Bishop Bartosik, and uh, walking the way of the cross on Good Friday? A family from my parish uh, has been a member of Communion and Liberation for a long time, and they invited me. I think it was through them that I got an invitation to provide the reflections at the Way of the Cross probably three years ago. And um, those reflections this year are being given by Bishop Dan Turley, who's oh, sure. an Augustinian priest and uh, recently retired to Chicago after 50 years, I think, in Peru. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to have uh, Bishop Dan with us this year. He's very involved uh, in, in immigration. He gave the Little homily at uh, our Cabrini dedication, our statue Last dedication. Last October. Yeah, he was wonderful. Wonderful bishop. And now maybe for our listeners, we know it begins, of course, Friday, Good Friday, rain, snow, or sunshine. I know you will walk. You've had some great weather. You've had some horrible weather. So this Friday, Good Friday, at, on April 7th, and gathering at 820. And David, the gathering happens where? Uh, we gather in Daily Plaza. Okay, so Daily Plaza. The, the statue, yes. And eight twenty. Yes, where the big cross is in Daily Plaza. Now, where can people find the route? Like, if they can't make it right at Daily Plaza, can you just briefly go through uh, the the way of the cross, the walk? Sure. So we we start in Daily Plaza. Usually, we are there for. 20, 30 minutes is kind of the first station in production. Then we walk to uh, the Veteran Memorial, which is uh, on the river walk. Um, and then from there, we continue to uh, Tribune Tower. Um, so we just walk the, the river walk and come up uh, on the on Michigan Avenue, Michigan and the river. And then from there, we go to the water tower, uh, walking on Michigan Avenue. And the last station is at Holy Name Cathedral in the garden in front of the Statue of Mary. Beautiful. And, and, there's way, and the thing is, and then as you're walking from place to place, is that when song happens or is that done in silence? No, that is done in silence, which I think is part of the beauty. So we, the songs, the reading, the reflections are all during the stations. And then we ask everybody to walk in silence. I think is a big wit like a great witness uh, in the chaos and the noise of the city just looking at hundreds of people walking in silence behind the cross I know this began in 2004 now in 2020 when COVID hit I know it did not happen I also think in 2021 it did not happen but in, of course in 2022 it did and of course this year and um, and so you know maybe for a moment Claire just to kind of come from a different angle, 
You've been doing this since your earliest memories of childhood going back to Boston. How has the Way of the Cross touched your life and affected Holy Week and for you and Good Friday in particular? I think it's always been something that you can, a very concrete gesture to center yourself around. I mean, there's there's always so much prayer and reflection that happens during Holy Week, but having a moment where you have to like leave your house and go do something very often uncomfortable, um, I think it's important because you have to take on that like for at least a little bit, a, a bit of a physical burden, um, but it's also a little bit of a pilgrimage. So there's so much time for, you know, forced, <laughs> forced reflection um and i feel like in our age it's so easy to have like even when i don't want to pull out my phone and start scrolling you know like it's it's mm -hmm. right there but when you're accompanied by all of these other people facing forward and walking together you're really accompanied to, to be reflective to be silent and to kind of take on this little bit of a sacrifice um and I've always loved the readings also, like some of mm -hmm. these readings I've been hearing for 22 years and they never cease to amaze me. They're just so beautiful. Um, and so I really look forward to this moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes one time my friend didn't want to come because it was raining and I was like, listen, I'm not sure Jesus wanted to carry the cross, but he did it anyways. So mm -hmm. let's go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the same question for you, Bishop Artosik, and then for David is uh, you know, the way the cross, I, I've always met the entire group at the last station at Holy Name Cathedral in the courtyard, and a huge group, you know, we're talking several hundred people. And so, Bishop Bartosik, how has the way the cross every year touched and impacted your life? Um, well, first of all, um, I think it's the friendship of uh, the people that I've met uh, through the way of the cross. Um, friendship is a very, very important value mm -hmm. uh, in communion and liberation. And for uh, Monsignor Giussani, whom Davide referenced, the founder of the movement within the church. Um, and it, it's such an easy friendship, you know? I mean, it's really a friendship with absolutely no strings attached, which is not an easy kind of friendship to mm -hmm. find, I think. Um, and it's the way Jesus loves us, uh, which uh, is the most powerful witness, I think. And and it's and the way of the cross simply reminds me of that each year and strengthens the the call to try to love that way, with no strings attached. I love um, that. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Can I ask how how is the what an honor to carry the cross? How is that person chosen? David? I think whoever wants to. I think like people who are carrying a cross. I mean, we know friends. Some friends we ask because we know they are carrying a cross. Personal, like it could be uh, someone who's sick in their family, uh, some something they're carrying in their life, or people just come up. Uh, people are gathered there we have never seen before. They ask to carry the cross. Wow, and they can carry. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And then David, how has the way the cross all these years now touched your life? So I think, uh, as Claire was saying, it's always been for me this moment, this privileged moment of reflection and also really in a very, very concrete way following Christ. Like it's, it doesn't get more concrete than that in, in a certain sense, right? Uh, the, the physical presence of Jesus in the cross and in the people who are gathered there. And I would say the other thing that has really changed me over the years in helping prepare it has been to look at the grace of God that makes this happen. We are 10, 15 people that try to put this together and then a lot of friends who help. And then you see hundreds of people that gather together and it's all thanks to the grace of God, right? Mm -hmm. If it was for our own abilities, there would be 20 people. So you can only witness to God building something important. I like that. Beautiful. We're going to take a little break. Just a little aside, um, if our listeners and viewers... Uh, have a chance on uh, Channel 11. Uh, Rick Steves has a program about Easter celebrate Holy Week and Easter celebrations around the world. And I might add, as Teresi Italian, the uh, many small towns in Italy have Holy Week becomes a part of their life. Yes, I mean it's just a beautiful, and I'm sure in many other countries that are too. But, but David, just that you brought that here. Uh, is, is a wonderful gift 
to our city. Um, and it integrates that Holy Week, that, whole, that Good Friday moment into a real life. I love that line here where it says thousands of people carry their crosses each day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you're walking with all of us in that. That's beautiful. WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic, Chicago, 312-255-8408. You can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We'll be back in a few minutes and continue our conversation. Make sure you have all the specifics on the Way of a Cross event that's going to happen on Good Friday in downtown Chicago. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Catholic Charities Blossoms of Hope Brunch will be held on Sunday, April 30th at Drury Lane in Oak Brook in support of the Loving Outreach to Survivors of Suicide Program, also known as LOSS. This inspiring brunch is an opportunity for all members of the LOSS community to gather with its founder, Father Charles Ruby, in support of the program and to celebrate the resilience that can be attained over time. For more than 40 years, LOSS has been compassionately accompanying individuals and families on their journey through grief. The program has been recognized by the United Nations as a model for helping those grieving this tragic event in their lives. In-person and online resources help people around the country find healing and joy in life again. To learn more about LOSS and the Blossoms of Hope Brunch, visit catholiccharities.net. Four for me teaching when I started here there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student now I'm the old person <laughs> right now I teach junior high math I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill people are always amazed what what you're here for 44 years it's hard for me to believe frankly <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. For more than 20 years, Catholic Charities Adult Protective Services has been advocating for seniors who are the victims of abuse, neglect, confinement, or financial exploitation. With our partners at local, city, and state agencies, our trained case managers follow through on every concern that is brought to our attention in a cooperative way to ensure that our seniors are safe and protected. According to the Illinois Department on Aging, last year nearly 21,000 cases of elder abuse were reported in Illinois. Of these, only 5% were reported by seniors themselves. So raising awareness is an important part of this issue. If you are concerned about a senior you know, call 800-252-8966. That's 800-252-8966. With your help, we can stop elder abuse and look out for the seniors in our lives. WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, 312-255-8408. Or you can go to YouTube 
facebook.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're having a wonderful conversation about the Way of the Cross event that's going to occur Good Friday, downtown Chicago. Bishop Mark Bartosa, Claire Chiodini, and David Bonicelli. Some beautiful Polish names. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Claire, Father Greg, you have a question. Claire, a question for you. When you're doing the entire walk, the Way of the Cross, I know that you know, you're on Michigan Avenue, you're on other busy streets. Cars passing by or people walking on the opposite side of the street, what's been their reaction? Do, do are uh, horns honking? Are people waving? What's the reaction of as you're passing by? Um, usually it's, it's not honking of the horns, at least from what I've noticed. There tends to be a sort of mixed reaction in the passers-by. Um, one part is just sort of mystified, is like, what is going on here? And sometimes they ask, like, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Um, the other part is my favorite part. It's, it's the ones who maybe are not sure what, you know, the exact gesture is, but they recognize that, that it's Good Friday. And so there's signs of crosses or people stop and walk with us just for a block or two, but just to be part of it. Um, and I think some of my favorite moments are the ones where you hear a side conversation of, what's going on? And then someone responds, I think it's Good Friday. And it's great because it's like, you see that you're bringing recognition to people who actually maybe do know that, you know, like have, have some sense for what this moment is, but maybe needed a reminder about it. So. In a very visual way. Can I ask uh, all, all three of you, uh, there there been any experience of someone on the outside joining you and maybe have you had a conversation with anybody um, I mean, because you're evangelizing is what you're doing in, in a big way. Um, anybody? Yeah, I think a couple of uh, uh, events I have in mind is like a couple of years, uh, we had to say people who were clearly dressed to go to work, a man in a, with a hard hat, you know, just dressed to go mm -hmm. to a construction site, joined us for a couple of, uh, um, of stations many people dressed in suits that might just come and you clearly see that just kind of like asking what is this, especially uh, the Daily Plaza, they take a booklet and they stay with us as long as they can. Uh, and then there's some friends we've met throughout the years, uh, were either invited or stumbled into the way of the cross. Um, and then especially kind of fell in love with the singing and then asked to join the choir and we are still friends, they still come. And so it is a place, a moment to, to encounter Christianity, you know, like the, the Catholic community. You know, maybe for a moment, uh, Bishop Bartosik, uh, in your life as a bishop in the Archdiocese of Chicago and Auxiliary and doing a marvelous job, your life is very, very busy, and Holy Week for you, for me, for many, is no exception. I know for our listeners, to let you know that for Bishop Bartosik, he loves to ride his bicycle. I've met him at different times <laughs> in the last couple of years. And he, he drives his bike to the cathedral or other places. Now, this is not riding a bike, but this is now walking. As you're doing the actual walk, Bishop, what is going through your mind? I mean, with so much on your mind, you can be thinking about your calendar, working on a homily for Easter or the vigil. But as, you, as you're walking, which is part of the silence, what goes through your mind from, in a sense, station to station? One thing is just the the graciousness of God that um, just through his grace, I'm a part of this. Uh, I had heard of it for years before somebody invited me personally uh, to be a part of it. Uh, all of you out there in TV land, consider yourselves invited wow. on Good Friday. Um, it was a tremendous grace to be invited to participate, uh, to meet uh, the people who are now good friends of mine. And I look forward to it every year, especially because I'm, uh, they, they tolerate me in the choir with the glare <laughs> and all the, <laughs> all the other great singers. Um, so um, it, just the, the opportunity to witness to my faith in Christ with a bunch of other people from all over uh, uh, and, and the sense of purpose that, that that we all have in doing that. 
uh, I think is the most beautiful thing. And that's what's really front and foremost in my mind during the walk. And now maybe in the last couple of minutes again, David, is give us the details. I know to gather on Good Friday, rain, sunshine, or snow, or sleet, 820 at the Daily Plaza, and then pick it up from there where people can maybe join along the way. Give us again the route. Yes, so Daily Plaza, uh, Veteran Memorial, uh, Tribune Tower, the Water Tower, and finally the Cathedral. And again, it's hard to give exact times. Each year is slightly different, depending on reflection and and singing. But um, usually, might take we stay for each station twenty to thirty minutes, and then the walk might take another twenty to thirty minutes in between stations. I do know that when you get to the cathedral between eleven thirty and eleven forty-five in the morning, it concludes the last station there with prayer and song is many people, when it concludes around 10 to 12 or 5 to 12, stay at Holy Name Cathedral for the 12 o'clock Mass, which we have a yeah. tremendous crowd, so all are invited to our noon Mass following the way of the cross. And maybe, Bishop Bartosik, um, when we took a group to the Holy Land, the Via Dolorosa was a surprise to me, the way of the cross, because it's a marketplace. Uh, do you want to speak? I mean, it seems so appropriate that you're walking through the city. Um, do you want to talk about that just a little bit as we close? Sure. You know, St. Paul said in the letter to the Galatians, may I never boast except in the cross of Jesus Christ. And um, we always need to reorient, reorient our lives. We always need to find, uh, you know, the North Star of our life over and over and over again and to walk right through the marketplace of Chicago carrying the cross. Uh, it's just a reminder that the Lord will always help us to find him um, if we give him the space, if we give the space, you know, to let ourselves be redirected, to be reoriented. Uh, he will always have patience with us and always um, give us a chance to uh, come to know him better and to love him more. And as I was saying, in loving him, we love our neighbor. We we, we find we have friends. Uh, it's the most beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful way to end the first half of the program. So want to thank in a very, very special way Bishop Mark, Mark Bartosek, Claire Chiodini, David Boncelli for joining us again this Friday, Good Friday, April 7th, to gather the Daily Plaza at 8.20 a.m. to begin the procession literally rain, sunshine, or snow, and hundreds of people will gather and will conclude at Holy Name Cathedral. So again, thank you for joining us. Our prayers are with you. I think the weather on Friday is supposed to be okay at this point. It's too early to tell. You're all smiling. So to Claire and Bishop Artosik and David, thank you for joining us. You're listening to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 750 AM. Father Greg Sack was along with Mark Teresi, 312-255-8408. Also get us on YouTube dot com slash Catholic Chicago. Stay with us and again do not touch that dial. Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847 782 
4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarian fund or call 312-534-7959. The Cemetery Ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 44 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic cemeteries willing to help you in your time of loss. Call 708-449-6100 or visit catholiccemeterychicago.org. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837. You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Welcome back to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 750 AM. 312-255-8408. Also get us on YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Father Greg Sackowitz and Mark Teresi. Mark, we forgot to mention that since we last had the program, baseball started. The Cubs, Sox, both won their openers. Cubs now are one and two. White Sox, two and two. Cubs, I think, go to Cincinnati for three games. Sox open up today their own opener, hoping for a full house at uh, against San Francisco Giants. So that's been our... Sports report <laughs> and rain, <laughs> later, <laughs> rain later tonight. So a great second half of the program lined up again, 312-255-8408. We have Father Lou Camelli and Michelle Sotak. And since Michelle's been on the program last, Michelle is now on the staff full-time at Holy Land Cathedral. And Father Lou uh, Camelli, the right-hand person for fa uh, Bishop or Bishop, Cardinal Blaise Subich. <laughs> Did you demote him? <laughs> the, the bishop, too. This is our last Cardinal, program. Our last program here in <laughs> Chicago for uh, uh, Cardinal Subich. And so our topic today, believe it or not, is faith and fitness. So you wonder how does faith and fitness connect. You're trying to convert us. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. I was, Mark, did you bring the donuts this morning? <laughs> <laughs> On this Monday of, of the Holy Week. And so, Michelle and Father Luke Camelli, welcome to the program. Great to see Thank both you. of you. Mm -hmm. Good to be Thanks here. Thanks so much for having us. Oh, you're yeah. very welcome. And you know, maybe as a way to kind of get the whole thing started is I know that you are both people of incredible faith, but also <laughs> with fitness, too. So, Michelle... Give us a, b a bit of your background. I know that you are a personal trainer, and has this been part of your whole life since childhood? Yes. So I've been a fitness professional for about 12 years now, but I've always been athletic as a kid. I love sports and just being active. So I didn't necessarily study fitness when I went off to college. I, I received a business degree in marketing communications, but after graduating, I felt that I still wanted to become more knowledgeable, so I became trained and um, well, I became certified in personal training, and so I've just really always loved the way it made me feel, and I want to share that gifts with others. And also, uh, Father Luke Camelli, being a great theologian, a wonderful priest from Archdiocese for what 1970. Uh, yeah, I actually December of '69. December '69, and so was in fact. And Father Camelli taught me theology. Yes, at Mundelein Seminary. So, but I do not take responsibility. <laughs> <for> <laughs> uh, <I> blame blame <laughs> Father Camelli. But also uh, the yeah, fact that we live you. together at the cathedral yeah. on the fifth floor. Uh, you know, Father Camelli, every day, Lou, you really enjoy working out. You had a great comment to me a couple of years ago. I said, Lou, why do you work out every day? I mean. 
I, I know why. And when you, you, you gave me an answer once that said, it helps you with the mind. It right. kind of clears your mind. Say right. more about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of my work is uh, ideas and it's at a desk and it's, uh, so I, and yet at the same time, we're not just kind of a detached brain uh, or spirit, but we're incarnate. We're, we're embodied people. And it's really important to, uh, to attend to the whole person because we function as a whole. And so in order to do my spiritual ministry, in order to do my theological work, I need to be mm -hmm. physically okay. I need to move along uh, that, uh, in that direction as well. How many times a week do you run into Father Greg at that exercise room? <laughs> Well, he comes in to greet me, you know, so I have to say that. I'm very he's, supportive. He's a supportive presence. I'm very, yeah. I, I walk we're, in. We're getting him there, slowly, slowly <laughs> moving Is it funny, the workout room yeah. is right, right next, is right to, next to my yeah, room. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's right next to my room. <laughs> we try to inspire him. That's the, that's the work right now. Now, how, how do you and Michelle connect in terms of that faith and uh, fitness piece? Well, Father Camilli has really been instrumental in me becoming involved at the parish. And so I got to know Father Camelli and uh, we, we just got to talking and, you know, he was helping me and we were, we were having Talking some about the spiritual journey. Yes. And then, yeah. and then um, we started just, you know, I started training him and it was a really great, uh, just, I would say it really helped our relationship grow, and then we saw yeah. the similarities between the two worlds of faith and fitness, and there's a lot there. You know, it's not both worlds, faith and fitness, are not easy, but they're both always worth it, and they better, you know, they make us better versions of ourselves. So that's how we connected, and then we noticed that it was something that we want to share with others. Now, maybe for a moment, make that connection. Each one of you begin with you, Michelle, is mm -hmm. uh, your a woman of very deep faith, you know, go with communion, go to mass every day if you can possibly can, and but you're you're making that c connection between faith and fitness. I'm sure people have never heard of a connection between I'm a person of faith, maybe I work out, but how do you connect faith and fitness together in your life? Well, it's sort of what Father Lou had said that it, they're interconnected. So um, I think I take a holistic approach to training. Um, you know, it's mind, body, soul, um, they're all connected, so you have to nurture all, all aspects in order to be the best version of yourself, or at least a better version of yourself. So the thing is that it's difficult, it's not easy, but in the long run, if we put the effort, it'll be worth it, and it's just something that we do so that we can do better for ourselves and our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's exactly right, Michelle. And um, one of the things I, I think that's important to, to note is f for a lot of people, uh, fitness can become like an obsession, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and, and, and body mm -hmm. image in our society and, and, and so forth. Um, and, and yet, it, that's not the whole of life. It isn't. I mean, in, in, it has to be informed by a, a, a larger vision of who we are. And, and, and so, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's the, 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 the fitness and the, uh, the discipline of, of working out and so forth is designed to help me carry on the mission and ministry more effectively. So when it's put in that perspective, and it's not just for a priest, but I, I think it's for everybody, that um, you, you're not just working out to work out or mm -hmm. to make yourself pretty. You're working mm -hmm. out so that you can be a, a more effective presence of Jesus in this world. And that's, that's really important. Now, when did you start, really? Has your whole life Mine? been being? Mine? Yeah. Uh, I, it, it started with, with running. Mm -hmm. Was and that back at Mundelein, Mundelein Seminary? Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of that, <laughs> some of that comes from my father, who ran until he was 81 years old. Did he wow. really? Yeah. He, Your he dad did. was a runner? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, big time. And so, uh, you know, he I, I saw him, and the, he kind of inspired me for that. And um, But it's been a long time, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and be, before that, it was more 
you know, some uh, sports or something. I, I was big into – this is no longer fashionable, handball. but handball, handball, right. not racquetball, handball. Right. Right. Nice. And, I, and I had the I had the uh, bruised hands to, sh- to show to it. Show it. <laughs> so there was that. But then then eventually I got more into this routine of, of running. And now, what know. about have you ever, uh, maybe both of you, but maybe Father Lou first, have you ever like slacked off and said, oh, I'm not going to go back to that, or has it always been so part of you that you never do? Except from w- the times that I've been sick, you know, and just physically unable. Right, you couldn't do no, it. No, I, I, I wouldn't say I've, I haven't slacked off. That's great. Anything. How about you, Michelle? Yeah, you know, it's deeply ingrained in me, but I will say that there are some times where I have um, fallen off the wagon a little bit, and then I noticed that the faith part pulled me back in. Oh. So it's really magical. So, um, you know, faith and fitness are things that will never fail you, but when it comes to both, if I had to choose one that saved me, it was my faith. And I agree with Father Camelli that some people do go overboard with fitness. Um, and you can go overboard, and you can go overboard with faith, you know, by being mm-hmm. scrupulous. But I try to find a happy right. medium. Yeah. And the thing is, I did get back into fitness when I fell off the wagon a couple years ago. Well, um, you the know. The death of your mother. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely devastated me, and I was pretty paralyzed. But I... Never lost my faith because my mom taught me never to be mad at God, and I just mm-hmm. took that advice, and I obviously was very sad. But what happened was I stopped working out, but then I would run, and that felt good, and then I would make baby steps into getting back into lifting weights, and I would pair up maybe like a podcast or like a live stream or the radio show, you know, um, the, the homilies that are on the YouTube of, of the Daily Masses, and then I would listen to those while I worked out. So and so that way it helped me kind you of. Know, I find it very interesting out. for both Father Lou and for Michelle, when you're dealing with faith and fitness, both require a discipline. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think sometimes people miss that because I know people who are very dedicated, like you know Lou, you working out, run, not running today, but you swim a lot, and Michelle working out. There's a discipline attached to that, but also in our faith life, there is a discipline because it's easy to fall away i'm not going to pray today i'm not going to pray tomorrow i can can miss mass on sunday so talk Mm -hmm. more about faith and fitness individually with with a discipline but also together lou yeah you know i I mean i think what you're you're right absolutely there there's something uh in both of those that has to do with deliberateness and intentionality in other words you decide i I, you know one of the uh, problems I, i see many people they they struggle with a way of living they just sort of fall into life Mm -hmm. they don't take hold of their Mm -hmm. lives and 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 we're talking here about something very different we're talking about (coughs) being deliberate about a disciplined life of prayer and taking care of yourself uh physically as as well um and and in a certain sense, you can see this in, in the Gospels. When Jesus calls his disciples, he's asking, you know, you've got to make a decision. You've got to be deliberate. You've got to be intentional. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it all kind of comes together, I, I think, in terms of our, our own freedom and our decisions. And Michelle, yeah. your response to that? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. It's just showing up and making it a good habit. So, you know, it's never easy to do Um, to take time to do things maybe we don't want to do that's sort of painful you know like working out is it hurts Mm -hmm. I mean if you're doing a moderate to vigorous exercise unless you're doing Zumba or something (laughs) that's fun you know um, you know so it's just having the courage to do it taking the time and that that comes with discipline like uh, you know setting aside time to do it and then also just showing up so that you can form good habits so with Lent a lot of people start Lent off by you know trying to replace bad habits with good habits and hopefully by good friday we've been able to gain some good habits <laughs> right <laughs> take us a break um, on that note mark wndz 750 am catholic chicago 312-255-8408 or you can go to youtube.com slash catholic chicago when we come back i'd like to talk a little bit about food how does okay. that fit in Sure. Fitness plans. Uh-huh. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned.
Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847 847- 782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. Welcome back. Es fabuloso verlos. Dobrze jest znowu być razem. It's good to be together again. After so many months apart, pandemic capacity limits have been lifted, and we want to welcome everyone back to church. We can all pray together again. And listen as our choirs lift their voices in song. We've been together in spirit, and now when you are ready, our doors are open wide Nuestras puertas están abiertas de par en par. Nasze drzwi są otwarte. And we're here to welcome you back to Catholic Mass. Community is core to Catholic Charities' founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake Counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. We're back, WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, 312-255-8408, or you can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're having a great conversation uh, with Father Luke Camelli, Michelle Sotek on faith and fitness. Mark, you go out and get me a chocolate shake. <laughs> <laughs> to go with the chocolate donut you're eating right now? Uh, Is there a problem? Anyway, <laughs> anyway before the break, uh, I had d- I'll direct this first to... Father Lou, coming from an Italian and Polish family where food is central, how do you look at food in terms of you're expending energy in the fitness part, but you're also, the intake's important. So how do you look at that? Yeah, well, I mean, pretty simply, I'd I'd say trying to, uh, I like food, Mm -hmm. as you know. You're a great cook. I like Great chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this. I mean, I think another piece in that, too, is I, I, I use food to connect with other people. So mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll cook to help make a connection with people, and, and that's, that's important. And you know what? Jesus did that, too. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of the gospel passages show Jesus eating mm-hmm. with people. And uh, so that, that's one piece. But the other, I, I think it's it really is important to uh, to eat in a healthy way, and that's a, a, a kind of act of, if you will, of stewardship of our bodies. You know, we could, <laughs> could you give them? Could you give? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could yep. you like give a d- daily menu? What what might your daily menu look like for you? For me? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, I would start out with um, an orange, 
mm-hmm. and um, oatmeal. Uh, this is a Father Greg breakfast. Uh. No, not exactly. <laughs> I, I, do a, I do eat oatmeal now. You do oatmeal yeah. now. Yeah. I'm converting got, them. With Lou a got, Mark, yeah. Lou got me into oatmeal. Yep. And, and you do anytime If we have a breakfast meeting, he'll order oatmeal. Exactly. Well, at, at least I get off to a good start. Yeah. yeah, half a pound of brown sugar, but oatmeal. Uh, <laughs> so oatmeal and orange at lunch, maybe some soup and fruit. At, at supper time, you know, some some meat and vegetables and all that. Go low on the carbs. You know what happened is I was moving towards it. My doctor told me I was moving towards type two diabetes, mm-hmm. and I didn't want that. I didn't want that to happen. Uh, n- not only because I didn't want to get sick, but also I want to serve. I want to do the ministry of Mm -hmm. a priest and i need to be in decent shape for that so so i would say i would put the the whole thing of eating and managing that stuff under the under the rubric of stewardship god has entrusted to me this body and and it's it's a it's a gift and uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of it and in, in order to be able to help other people beautiful maybe in during this whole season of lent and now we move into holy week michelle is uh you know, we talk about Lent as a time of giving up, beside a time of giving, but also if you, you know, a word that you use with me often is the word fasting. So we talk about from food, but I'll share in your whole, in your own personal life, you know, in terms of uh, discipline, uh, food choices, and a giving up in terms of fasting, especially during the, maybe this Holy Week. Absolutely. So, I don't see it as self-deprivation to give up something. It's that's not the point. Yeah. Or fasting. It's it's a way to honor, you know, what Jesus did for us and honor our bodies and respect our bodies and because it is our temple, you know. So the whole point I think is to replace bad habits with better ones for to be in union, better union with God and to be there for better in, for our community, so to be there for others as well. Because I know that if I'm fueling my b- body p- properly and I'm eating the right macronutrients, I'm going to feel better and, you know, um, I think just do better in general. It really does have an effect on you if you're not eating uh, healthy. And it's okay, everything in moderation, right? You can have that donut and things like that. <laughs> oh, because thanks, we should see, have Mark, and, you I know, told you, Mark. A donut. A yes. donut. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Not the special six-pack of Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. And we all know what we need to detach from. We know what God wants us to detach yeah. from, like, you know, social media. And, you know, YouTube is great. We're on YouTube right now. It's a platform for good, but it can be a rabbit hole. Right. So And it, it locks up our time, and we want to free up our time. And so it's just having that matter of discipline, which is not easy, but, again, there has to be an effort there. Now, what about when you – so you go to Walgreens, and there are 3 million supplement choices. What about that? What about supplements? Is that, is that in lieu of or addition to? or? Yes, great question. Whole foods is always – what I strive to get the nutrition through real food, but supplements is just that it's a supplement. Um, and if you are to choose one, make sure you're choosing a clean one because there's all kinds out there. If it tastes really good, if it tastes like, you know, cookies and cream or cereal, it's probably not <laughs> yet healthy for you, but there are some healthy options and it's okay to take, um, you know, like immediately after a workout or, you know, there's some supplements that help us, um, fuel our bodies, around our workouts but i suggest whole foods if possible the correct macronutrients and micronutrients so that's your carbs your good fats your proteins and then your micronutrients are your your uh, vitamins and minerals that a lot of people don't think about but that's mostly in vegetables and mm-hmm. fruits now a lou a word you mentioned during the break talk to us about aestheticism yeah i uh, th- this is a, a great connection the the greek word for exercise is axesis and we and we picked that up in our spiritual mm-hmm. tradition as asceticism, you know, and, and and that's tied into giving things up and and and, and, and all that. So it's kind of interesting that we have this uh, kind of one word that kind of straddles both spiritual exercises and physical exercises, you know. But I wanted to say a, a, a word about this whole thing of giving up and asceticism in general. Because we're not trying to prove anything to God. We're not trying to prove anything to ourselves. We're not trying to prove anything to anybody else. What this giving up or asceticism is about in this disciplined life 
is about clearing a space so that God can move in our lives. You, the, one of the most wonderful insights that I came across once was, was this. A spiritual writer, an anonymous one, said that whereas nature abhors a vacuum, the Holy Spirit abhors a fullness. Hmm. So, y- wow. you know, in nature, a vacuum will get filled up mm-hmm. with air, or water, whatever. Right? Uh, spiritually, if we're full, m- the main problem would be full of ourselves mm-hmm. or other things. There's no room for this Holy Spirit to maneuver. So that's why we have to empty out. And that emptying out is a giving up. Or that's a very s- that interesting that you say that because we know the houses of people on Thanksgiving Day, they go into the day very hungry. And by late afternoon or early evening, they are so <laughs> full, full that they feel lousy because they are so filled up. They can't move. You get sleepy, yeah. and, and and how do you feel? How do you deal with that feeling of <laughs> lousiness <laughs> every day? <laughs> Can I ask one question? I know we have a little bit of time. So, what we're talking about makes so much sense as a ministry. Yeah. Why don't Why don't you guys start that? Um, we're talking about Michelle and I. We're talking about the 175th at the cathedral. Yeah, mm-hmm. our new generation. Let's look at that. Yeah. Why isn't this should be a ministry in every parish, wouldn't you think? Faith and fitness. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Well, really, it's, I mean, another way to put it is a holistic spirituality. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, because I think that that frames it pretty well. And that's the same thing as saying faith and fitness. But a holistic spirituality looks at the whole person, uh, mind, body, spirit, soul, everything, mm. and, and, and says, you know, we have to, take care of and attend to the whole person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Any closing remarks, Michelle, to kind of pull the whole thing together in the last 15 seconds? Uh, when people say to you, well, why should I work out? You know, why should I be connected with faith? I would just say that it's the two things that have helped me. They're my passions for a reason because they help me be a better person. And I just think that it's worth the effort. Mm-hmm. It brings great rewards. I like that. You know, connecting faith with fitness. Yes. We need a program to a close, so I want to thank in a very special way. Father Luke Camelli, Michelle Sotak, mm-hmm. who are people of faith and fitness. You live it. You're always living life for other people, so I want to thank you very much for being on the program this morning, and we will all walk back to the cathedral together. Mm-hmm. I want to thank in a very special way. Mark Teresi, <laughs> uh, who keeps me very honest. Greg <laughs> drove over. And I, I, <laughs> I drove over. I want to thank in a very special way. Both Brian Hockey, Ben Brock, and Michael May, our producer engineers, the program, and to our listeners, a very blessed Holy Week. Make time this week to make this week holy. God bless. Great day. Thank you. Thank you. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.